quieter and short. <clears throat> Try that again, shall I? Um, you'll probably notice I'm slowly moving. I think the uh, stand is slowly coming off the windscreen, but if I tilt my head like that, there we go. Um, <clears throat> Hello and welcome back to Automotive Tales. You join me in an Audi A6. Okay, so it's not a massive mystery. Uh, I have actually done some content on this car, which I haven't yet put up on the channel because I haven't got around to editing it. And apparently I'm terrible at framing videos. So one of the things I'm definitely gonna miss about this Volvo is... Uh, if I have finished it, it'll be in a little card at the top of the screen somewhere. But we are going out with the Audi today. Uh, I'm actually taking it back to the person I bought it from, um, but not to return it for a very different reason. So before we get on to talking about the Audi, um, I just thought I'd kind of talk to you a little bit about what's going on with the channel. So you will probably be aware this is basically the wettest winter we have had on record, which means progress with HQ 2.0, progress with anything to do with classic cars is basically ground to a halt because despite the lovely weather we're having this morning, it always, always rained. In fact, it's due to rain this afternoon. So we never get a full day without it raining somewhere. Um, so in the meantime, there are a few things happening which are car related, but not enough to make individual videos on. So I'm trying to make a video today of some of the stuff that's happening this weekend, just because there is car related content and it's quite interesting, hopefully for you. So my first activity of the weekend is, well, can you tell where I am? No. Uh, it's not actually that obvious from the interior, but uh, I am in a Kia, but I'm not in any old Kia. I am in a Kia Stinger V6 twin turbo. So this belongs to Dr. David, from whom I bought the Audi, and he is working away, so I'm dropping it off for service at the Kia dealership. And then when it's finished service, I'm allowed to go and do a little test drive on it. So um, I'm gonna tell you what it's like driving this absolute monster of a Kia. A few moments later, Okay, I am back in the Stinger. It has been serviced by the dealership here in Loughborough. And so uh, time for me to return it. And the owner, Dr. David, has allowed me to go for a little drive. Now, I don't profess to know an awful lot about these cars other than they hold a bit of a legendary status for the twin turbo V6 engine they've got. And the fact it's rear wheel drive, not front wheel drive, which is quite novel in this day and age. Um, so I am definitely looking forward to uh, a drive in this. It does help if I get it into drive. Foot on the brake pedal first. <clears throat> Very safety conscious. Uh, right, I've got a little GoPro with me, so I'm gonna hopefully, when I've got a nice piece of road, um, stick the camera on the back, see if we can hear what it sounds like, because it's very closeted in here, it's very quiet. It feels like a premium vehicle for sure. And um, so you can't really hear the engine note unless you push on a little bit. And as it was freezing cold this morning, um, and it only sort of just got up to temperature by the time I delivered it to the dealership, I haven't had the chance to open the taps at all. However, it's had a service, they've run it up to temperature, it is now ready to go. Uh, so I need to concentrate on which way I am going home, um, and then uh, <clears throat> see what it's like to drive. Um, spoiler alert, probably very fast. So this particular model of Kia Stinger is the full fat twin turbo 3.3 litre V6, which is a 365 horsepower engine delivering that peak power at 6,000 RPM. So this is not a machine to be messed with. And this is the rear wheel drive version. So making it really quite spicy. And it is the GT model. So it comes with the big Brembo pack brakes and it comes with the same as all the other models, the eight speed automatic transmission with the paddle shifts and changeable driving modes, uh, which gives you sport, uh, which is what we will be using today, and sport plus, which is basically for, you know, hedge dodging, because all it does is sport without traction control. Nope, not for me. So that epic V6 should give us a naught to 60 in 4.9 seconds, which is marginally terrifying. So a few things to notice already, uh, I've popped it into sport mode. I'm gonna avoid sport plus because that turns traction control off and we all know where that leads. Um, but instantaneously moving from comfort to sport mode, it definitely holds gears a little bit longer, even just driving around town. 
um, so it sharpens up the response to the throttle quite a bit um, and I'm sure it makes slightly more noise it might have active exhausts um, as I say I don't know a lot about this car I haven't had time to research about it so bleep bloop in the comments below what you know about the Kia Stinger V6 twin turbo uh, I have also noticed it's got flappy paddles because it is an auto um, but I'm probably going to leave it in automatic for now because I'm not used to the car and I don't want to overload my tiny pea brain with lots of things to do um, although the temptation to pull these nice aluminium paddles at the back here because uh, they make quite a reassuring click is very tempting um, but I have a not so clear road and lots of cars so that's sadly not going to happen um, but hopefully we'll find a clear bit of road where I can safely stretch his legs. Okay, my first little go in sport mode. Let's see how it goes. Oh my good God, that pulls quickly. Jeez, and that's 60. Goodness me. I didn't even get my foot all the way down. I definitely hesitated at the rest. Let's go. That's good, I like that. <clears throat> That's not what I was expecting from a Kia. I knew it would be quick, but that is properly, properly fast. Here we go again. Good God! <laughs> that definitely picks up its skirts and goes. There is definitely a Germanic quality about the look of this car. And that's actually not a surprise when you realize that the lead designer is Peter Schreyer, who is a German automotive designer who cut his teeth at Audi, um, specifically noted for his contributions to the original Audi TT. Um, so it's no surprise then that the lines are very nicely proportioned and it's generally a really good looking car. So, very nearly home now with the Kia. By home, I mean Dr. David's home, dropped the car off. Uh, and it's always a tricky balance when someone lends you a car and says, you know, go and drive it, see what you think of it. Um, trying to, you know, find out what the car's all about without also pushing it a little bit too far. Um, so I've tried to be very careful. Uh, I've kept it in sport mode, not sport plus. And even with traction control on, it was a little bit squirmy. There's quite a lot of power there for it to keep control of, but it kept everything in check when I uh, squirted the throttle once or twice. Um, and I'm now wafting along in eco mode, which actually makes it a very civilized car, actually. I'm fairly sure in eco mode, it quietens the exhaust down. It certainly reduces the throttle response, makes the gear changes much more gentle. Uh, and actually it's a very civilized motor vehicle. Um, when it's in sport mode, it is anything but civilized. It definitely holds gears. The throttle response is very sharp. The exhaust note definitely gets louder and it is quick. So yeah, very impressed here. Shame they no longer sell the uh, Stinger. I wish I could justify having something this thirsty in my life, but I can't. And on the subject of thirst, uh, we're passing a petrol station. So um, in return for him letting me have a little drive around the car, I am gonna brim the tank on this Kia. Um, it's got half a tank in already, so let's see how much that's gonna cost me. Uh, right, better focus on which side we're putting fuel in. Uh, oh, <clears throat> other side, I think. There's people that own Kias probably watching this going, um, what are you doing? Uh, it's on the left-hand side, you moron. Uh, do your research before picking up the car. Well, yes, indeed. Um, this was a bit of a last minute effort, so uh, I'm, I was too lazy and asleep to do research. Sue me. Right. Uh, no, no, into neutral, park, hammering on. Right then, Kia service done. Kia returned back to Dr. David. And uh, now it's on to, well, working on the house and finding out where the new leaks have come from. Um, but you will join me again tomorrow when we're going to look at a classic car that's for sale. Right, so we are out and about, and today's job is to go and look at a classic car. As I mentioned earlier in the video, uh, and what we're looking at is a Nissan Figaro, which, if you're not familiar with it, is technically a Nissan Micra with a fancy frock, but it's a bit cooler than that. Um, so, yeah, let's go and have a look at this little car. Right, we are back from looking at the Figaro. Uh, the Figaro was at a family home, so I didn't really feel comfortable asking to film there. Uh, but they allowed me to take some photos of the car and I'll talk you through what happened. Uh, now it's a really well-priced Figaro. Coming in at 3750, that was the asking price for the car. Um, <clears throat> we knew it wasn't gonna be perfect at that price because the prices range from the bottom end, which is about that, 
right way up to about 12, 15,000 pounds for an immaculate low mileage Figaro. Now this was neither of those things. Um, the first telltale of uh, some need for TLC was a very noisy power steering pump uh, as soon as they started the engine and every time you turned the steering. However, the engine did sound very, very smooth and very sweet. There was no smoking whatsoever. I believe the turbocharged one litre engine in the uh, Figaro is renowned for smoking at higher mileage or it's been driven particularly hard. Uh, cosmetically, the car was very rough indeed. While the sills looked pretty good and strong, and obviously the front arches don't rust because the front wings are plastic, uh, the rear arches have got some signs of rot setting in, particularly on the rear right hand, the driver's side, uh, and the interior was really quite tatty. While everything was there, apart from a broken indicator lens on the front, uh, all the interior plastics had gone sticky, which is rectifiable with a bit of sort of alcohol wash, but is a long job to do taking the interior apart piece by piece and cleaning it. Um, but it was functionally all there, so it drove very nicely. Uh, it had an MOT until September. Uh, however, there were some worrying things on the MOT history, um, constantly wearing out the rear left tire, which suggests either some earlier accident damage or there's a bush or a bearing that had gone on the car. Uh, and while the price was very competitive for the amount of work that needed doing, we reckoned there was about two to three thousand pounds worth of work to get that car up to spec. At least initially, uh, the couple who were looking at the car wanted something that was going to be usable fairly instantly and would be a, not quite a daily driver, but a regular driver, certainly through summer and into winter. So looking for something that hasn't already got a bit of a problem with rot would be a good place to start. So they have chosen to spend a little bit more and they're going to go and look at some that are in the mid range of the price bracket and look a little bit more complete and don't need a immediate work diving into the engine to do the power steering pump and possibly a few other gotchas to go with. So that is the end of the little Figaro adventure for now. Uh, if they do purchase a Figaro, they have promised we can feature it on the channel. So stay tuned for some Figaro content. So I'm going to finish this sort of vlog, if you will, of what's going on in the world of automotive tales with the very first use of the ramps. So my brother-in-law's polo uh, started to make some strange squeaking noises after a visit to the garage for a new top mount. And before we drive all the way back to the garage to say what's the problem, I'm pretty sure I know what it is. So let's get it up on the ramps, which could be a challenge in itself, and see if we can fix the problem. Right, so we're going to have a go at getting the first vehicle ever on our ramps. Unfortunately, because we haven't done the patio outside the front of the garage yet, uh, there's still a bit of a ramp to get up onto it. So we have got quite a lot of MOT gravel here, um, which we've sort of moved around to hopefully get in okay. But you see these ramps, uh, they do hang off the front of the lift just a little bit. So that's gonna be interesting. No idea if this is gonna work or not, but there's only one way to find out, right? Okay, left hand down a little bit. That works. I left them down a bit. Okay, straighten up for that. Okay, stop there for a second. Here it goes. So the beauty of having ramps, you can inspect a car from underneath. And the reason we uh, brought the car up here was because of a funny noise on this corner and I was almost certain it was the back plate here. You can't really see very well on the camera behind the brake disc, just rubbing slightly on the disc. It had the top mount replaced very recently. And I wonder whether they took this assembly out and that's just got ever so slightly bent. So it's making a horrible scraping noise. Insert video here. But while we're under the car, we had a quick check anyway, make sure, you know, the exhaust's looking all right, everything's looking good on the rear end. And we have actually spotted there is a shot damper here. As you can see, we just cleaned it up to see what it is. Little sax damper here, 
you can't really see it on the camera because I haven't got an inspection light yet. Um, but yeah, added bonus, we found the shocks need doing as well, or at least this one corner. Right, time to gingerly get the car back off because you can see our Heath Robinson um, solution for getting the car on and off the ramps is to build some ramps out of gravel and then these up here fold out uh, and we had to put the frames that the lifts came on underneath just to support it when the ramps go down. Um, so yeah, this is a bit of a problem at the moment, but the reason is we're waiting for the doors to go on. Then we're going to redo all of this space out here so that we can bring the level up and this will no longer be a problem. Uh, right, time to get the polo down. Okay, Dave's taking the brave pills. Get it down. It doesn't. It's not actually that obvious on the camera here, but there is it's quite a raise on there. It's got to come down. So uh, here we go. Slowly, slowly. It's right, just because it's going to sink in a little bit. Whoa, that just. Yeah, go on, a bit more. It might just catch on the gravel at the front underneath, but I think you're all right. Yeah. Like a glove. Okay, that is all for this episode of Automotive Tales and this sort of strange hodgepodge vlog type video. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, I might have to do a few more of these because I haven't got any sort of long form content ready to go. Uh, I'm still waiting on the welder to come and finish the past the Picasso, which is still here. I'm still working on it. I know it's run out of MOT, uh, but it's not going to get to the MOT without a new sill for sure. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we're going to hopefully do some more stuff on the garage. Now the weather has turned, we're slowly getting some warm, dry days. We can start to actually get on and finish in the garage. Right? That's all for me. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>